Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds, number 29. And it's where I like to collect together all the new music that I've purchased over the past week and present it to you. And I get it from different places, like uh, local record stores, of course, but uh, not as many as we used to have, unfortunately. So a lot of online retail as well, like Amazon, eBay, and more. For this past week, I've got uh, six new music finds to go through with you. It breaks down into three new releases, two imports, and one replacement album, which I'll talk to you about a little bit more. But before we do, if you are new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with new music finds, episode number 29. All right, and as we normally do, we kick off with new releases. So I'm gonna go through the ones that are the latest, brand new, and we'll kind of work our way backwards through that. First one up being big one that was out this past Friday, Iron Maiden Sinjutsu. So September 3rd, this just came out, 17th studio album double album and you know the overall sound of this is different than uh, typical maiden albums it's a uh, slower darker it's more uh, moody and brooding at places it's also got some more atmospheric feel to this where uh there's these interludes the intros and outros and things that are on the songs themselves before it will really kick in giving the album a different feel as a whole but i think there's a lot of character and depth to each of these songs making it very interesting to listen to and for me at least that holds my interest all the way through on this and um, I'm going to be doing an album ranking on these, and you'll get to see where that one falls into place. But uh, there you go. This one's kind of cool. It's got a double, uh, you know, that album cover and then this album cover. And um, touched on it briefly in my full review of this, of which I'm going to leave a link in the description below. But there's nowhere on here that it has the track listing. That is in the booklet part of it. Is, is, you know itself so you've got to pull the booklet out to get to that and that was really my only complaint to this otherwise there's some very cool artwork on it and definitely uh nice stuff there so the next one that i've got here is uh came out on august 27th so a little behind on picking it up here sometimes when there's only one new release like this that was coming out i will then explore some past ones that i overlook to see if i want to pick them up and this was one of those john mellencamp the good samaritan tour 2000 so this one here, as you can see, just a thin cardboard sleeve like this, um, but that's the way that he's been doing it. His last three, four albums like this have just been these plain cardboard sleeves. I guess the opinion is, you know, CDs don't sell, so why put packaging into it, which is unfortunate. But this one here, which I wasn't planning on picking up, turned out to be really interesting. So it documents tour performances that he did in public parks, common spaces and on street corners these were free shows unannounced you just showed up acoustic guitar violin or fiddle or, or something along those lines some backup singers and performed uh, i was very low fi um, no pa or not a major pa of any kind it was battery operated i think and the crowds just showed up for those kind of things and so i thought this wouldn't be that interesting but I have to say that uh, the crowd noise for this, as well as the quality of recording, really surprised me. It's got a very energetic feel to this thing that uh, made it quite interesting when listening to it and I could get into it. So despite it not being a full band, it's a great performance, a lot of energy as I said. Um, the songs, it's got a lot of cover songs on it spanning uh, rock and folk classics and stuff. And then he sprinkles in a few of his own songs. So just from the standpoint of some unreleased John Mellencamp covers, it's pretty cool just for that too. All right, next one up was one I had no idea about until about a week ago, and I'm scrolling through on Amazon as I sometimes do, just kind of waiting to see what pops up in those recommended uh, categories things, and this was one of them. Ray Wilson, The Weight of Man. So it actually came out August 27th, but I didn't know about it. So I imported this one here, a seventh solo album by Ray Wilson. For those of you that don't know who Ray Wilson is, former Genesis frontman for a very short period, two years only, 96 to 98. And he did the album that you can see behind me there, Calling All Stations. And so 
Um, I was a big fan of that album. I liked it. It was much more progressive. They went back to their roots of the 70s for that album. And so I very much enjoyed it. But unfortunately, they did not uh, progress or proceed with Ray Wilson as the front man, taking over, of course, for Phil Collins. And that's all we really have to go on. But Ray Wilson continued on doing solo albums and uh, his own band, uh, Stilt Skin and stuff like that. So a lot of great stuff out there. If you liked that, a lot more Ray Wilson out there for you to check on. And lately he's been doing these in um, this sort of book style. I think they call these the media book, right? But it's actually the size of the CD. And so no pictures of Ray in this, but a lot of cool, um, you know, atmospheric sort of look and art to this stuff to give you an idea of what's going on lyrics and whatnot that are in it. But yeah, a little book style thing, kind of cool. And then the next one that I got came out back on July 2nd and I just was having a hard time getting a hold of it through Amazon. So you guys have heard I've done this before. I'll cancel it from there and import it instead because I kind of get tired of waiting. The Choir Boys, a bit of what you fancy, 30th anniversary edition. So this is the re-recording of their debut album. And again, you can see it that behind me there. Sometimes I try to get uh, stuff behind here for you guys to see when I'm referencing stuff. So Ray Wilson there, Calling All Stations by Genesis, and Bit of What You Fancy by the Choir Boys, all kind of stuff that I'm referencing here in particular. So yeah, re-recording 30 years on. Now, this is a bit more uh, gravelly and rough than the original. Obviously, the one done originally in uh, 1990 was um, uh, much more well-produced and polished and so forth. But if you've liked the Choir Boys as of late, this is definitely worth checking out for that in and of itself. And it's cool. It's got a write-up about what that recording was like and so forth. And got some good shots of the guys and um, good live one there of the, the band and so forth. So... Very cool stuff, nice to have this 30th anniversary celebration, a little bit different than the way that we remember it. Um, but you know, I've got the original, so it's great to get this, and it's a little something different too than just an outright live performance. As so many bands do, they go out and they perform the album live in its entirety, but I appreciate this, where they actually did this in studio. All right, next one up here was one I totally didn't think I'd be buying. And so I had let this one slide by, but a friend of mine recently went and saw this band in concert and it sort of piqued my interest. And I thought, hey, let me give them a shot. So I checked them out and was thoroughly impressed. And I'm talking about garbage, no gods, no masters. Came out June 11th, so seventh studio album. This one here, the deluxe set. Um, and so because it's the seventh album, the band took that numerology into account, the number seven, and the album content, the DNA of it is described around the seven virtues, the seven sorrows, and the seven deadly sins. So kind of cool. It's not really a concept album, but yet there is an underlying concept to what's going on here. Uh, so the album itself features 11 songs, and then there's a bonus disc of eight additional songs, of which two of those are cover songs, Starman by David Bowie, and then Because the Night, which is Bruce Springsteen and Patti Smith. Both have done versions of this song. But let's take a look at this box because it's really cool. It's a clamshell style. You can see there's the original 11 and the additional eight there. And there's the side of that. And as I mentioned, it's a clamshell, so it opens like this. And we got the booklet right on top. And I'll give a little thumb through on that in just a minute. It's an extended version of the one that comes in the regular CD. Then there's a poster in it. Then we've got these cards of each of the band members, and I'll thumb through those in a moment. But I also like that we get the discs separate, in sleeves, not just floating in there or combined or something. So that's pretty cool. And they broke it down too to the, uh, the title, each one, No Gods, No Masters, written on it like that. Let's take a quick look at the cards. We've got Shirley Manson there on that one. We've got the rest of the guys all done very nice art-wise on these. And there you go. All right, and there was a poster that's in this. Let me open that up. Single-sided poster, get this uh, right so you can read it. There you go, be kind. Right. And then the booklet. And as I mentioned, this one's a deluxe booklet. There's, there's lyrics and information for all of it, including the bonus tracks. So a bit more than you would get if you were just outright buying the standalone single disc on it. 
So that's kind of cool. Sometimes you get the bonus disc and then there's no information on it. And that always kind of bugs me, but here you go. You actually get it. And it's all together in that clamshell box. And I picked it up for $22 at my local store. So that wasn't even an Amazon purchase. So that was a really good deal for all of this stuff uh, together. Now, the last thing that I picked up here, and I mentioned it at the beginning of this, is a replacement. So it's Journey, Greatest Hits 2. Now, I already owned this. There you go. There's the two versions. This one here, as you can see, was a promo. It had a hole in it. And that's not the reason I'm actually replacing it. I'm going to see if you guys can actually see this or not. This is the original. This is the new one. And if we look at these here, and you stare at these, this one here, the inlay card is much thinner. They bent it in the wrong place. And I've been getting that on a lot of these. This one here, you can see, fills the entirety of that plastic, whereas this one here, it cuts off right under the word or the name itself. I know it may be a little hard to see in this, but that really bugs me because CDs sit face up like this, right? So you can see it. So on the wall, like behind me, I'm always seeing that defectiveness. And you know, once, twice, whatever, but I'm getting this a lot. And I don't know why it happens on this face and almost never on the opposite, the back side, the side that goes against the wall. But I'm getting it a lot. Anyway, sorry about the long story there. Um, the replacement of it, brand new, $4.99. All right, so I thought, why not? I'm just gonna pick it up, I can replace it. Then I got home and I found this about it. So here's a weird thing. I picked up the $4.99 one. And it's got this glossy, reflective, very thin, papery version of this. And I thought something didn't quite feel right. So I went to the original one and I pulled it out. And yeah, it's a little glossy, but it's matte. And it's almost like it's on cardstock. It's much harder, thicker paper than the original. It's not cheaply done. So I hadn't really noticed that, but I was kind of wondering, well, how do they get away having these so cheap? Well, some I have found you get, and there's nothing on the inside of the booklets anymore. They just got rid of it. In this case, they actually printed on cheaper paper. So what I did is I took the booklet from the original one, nice card stock, and I took the inlay card of the brand new one, swapped them out. That is my replacement. I know that's kind of crazy, right? But some of you guys get me, right? That's what we have to do in order to get uh, the perfect disc uh, sometimes. And so, you know, you kind of get those things you experience that. I bought the first one used that way and it was a promo, so it had the whole punch and whatnot. And I accepted it and I think I got it for a dollar or two. And I bought the replacement for $4.99 and you put it together, it's still only like six bucks. So. Anyway, there you go. Those are my new music finds for this past week, number 29. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And do check the description for links to related videos. In particular, I'll leave a link to the full Iron Maiden Sinjutsu uh, review if you want to check that out, as well as some other things. And, um, you know, and if you're still watching and you enjoy this, maybe you'll consider sharing this out on social media. Help spread the word that way. I would also really appreciate it. All right, everyone, take care. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.